James Ooh. and good evening, good. Chef Nancy. Good morning. Oh. Hey, good evening. Nice to see uh, you. Good evening, Nancy. To see you, uh, streaming live from uh, nice to see you, everyone. Laia Batangas and then Nancy <laughs> from Houston. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, uh, I'm, my name is Antonias, yeah. uh, streaming live here in Laguna together with the Adobo Queen. And we have a very special guest. One of the OGs in the chef industry, in the pastry, and you know all the restaurants. Uh, yes, <laughs> James Antolin, uh, and please join us um, and uh, join us in our discussion. We'll get to know James. Uh, actually, I know James from the restaurants, but di ko talaga alam paano nagsimula si oh, James uh, Antolin, and uh, we're getting uh. to know him, his culinary DNA. And uh, please join us. We're awesome live with Chef James Antolin. Uh, can you? All right, we're so excited. So, Nance, um, hello, kilala ko yan eh, ninong ko yan eh. Ha, ha. Ninong ko yan. <laughs> Alam mo, Nancy, ah. Hindi eh, di, di nga kita matawag ng Tita Nancy eh. Kasi What? ang hirap tawagin si Tita Nancy. Sabi ko, ano, Nancy na lang kasi di nung tawag sa akin. <laughs> okay. Ako. So to kick off our discussion, uh, Chef James, uh, maybe let's start with, how, how did you start uh, in this industry? Uh, and how did you, kasi pe- a lot of people know you winning awards in pastry and, uh, and now the Japanese uh, genre. Pa- paano ka ba nagsimula? And maybe yes, to kick off, saan ba nang galing yung culinary DNA wow. ni Chef Dave Patrick? Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, of course, uh, if my close friend knows about this, I, I moved to the States in 1981. Yeah. So basically, my parents moved to LA, San Francisco first, LA, uh, for a better future for us. So... I guess my parents are really, really thinking about us. During that time, as you know, it was really a little bit difficult here in the Philippines. Uh, so we moved. And the only way we can actually be legal in the States is actually to open a business. In fact, during back then, I remember $50,000, meron ka ng business permit. That's how cheap it was before. Diba? And the only thing that we, my parents were thinking was to open a restaurant. Okay. So I was 11 years old, I think, or 12 at that time. So basically, I have no knowledge of what restaurant business is all about. My mom, she's an optometrist. My dad was a businessman. So we actually, my brothers and sisters, we were in the plane and looking at each other. My brothers are older than me. So basically, they have friends already. So they didn't want to move. But apparently, there was a reason for that. And I'll get to that later on. But uh, when we opened the restaurant, my mom was a very, she's from Malabon. So basically, she's a very good cook, uh, home cook. So she does pancit Malabon, yeah. chinta, kamachile, which is the uh, cookies, diba? Yeah. Nakasama ng ano yun, pancit Malabon. Uh, basically, we were partners with our uh, relatives. And before we open, we have to find out, we have to name the restaurant. And the restaurant's name, huh, it's in a Filipino community, which is in West Covina. So everybody knows that, where West Covina is. So uh, during that time, Kokonti palang rin yung Filipino in the 80s. So we opened a restaurant named Spoon and Fork. The fork and spoon, ah, spoon and fork. Siyempre, pagpasok mo, what's in the wall? Wooden spoon, wooden fork, the fork. So, oh, malaki. So, kami, as a young kid, oh, wow. Oh, oh, parang weird. But it's a Chinese Filipino fast food. So, we cater, because my parents said, let's cater to uh, the Americans. Since, you know, Filipinos already know what our dish dishes are, let's cater to the Americans. So, let's name it spoon and fork. Hindi yung, to, yung talagang... Filipino na, you know, na pangalan. So, uh, we had some, you know, uh, foreign or uh, Americans and other nationalities actually. Yan, ganyan. Pero kahoy, ah. Nancy, amin. Talagang kahoy. Brown. 
Howie ba yan? Sa amin, brown. Oh, oh. So, 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 we have a variety of, ano, uh, you know, in the menu, parang, meron kami jiguan, which my mom calls it uh, chocolate soup, which I remember when I was, when I was young, there was this uh, uh, African-American who comes there all the time. Can you have, can I have the chocolate soup? And we, in back of my mind, I, I, I was, I was saying, kung alam lang talaga nito Amerikano to kung ano yung chocolate soup, pero gusto gusto niya. It's actually intestine. Talagang intestine, ha? At that time, the in- intestine there, kinatapon lang nung sa supermarket yun. I mean, you could, you could see it in a Mexican store where it's on the floor and my mom would buy it and then clean it talaga. Pero medyo malinis doon. It's very clean. And we do chicharong bulaklak, which we call raffle fat. Okay, so... What? Yun, paborito ng mga adyan. Raffle fat. Kasi may mga raffle siya na taba. Raffle oh, diba? fat. Kasi okay. pag... pag eh, yeah. So, uh, pag, kasi pag sasabihin mong it's uh, chicharong bulaklak, you have to explain it so much for them. Na, What's bulaklak? Oh, it's flower. But it doesn't look like a flower. So, parang, you know, raffle na lang gawa ganun. So, eto ba yun, di ba? So... Uh, it's 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 something that I Nia uh, when I was young. It's quite interesting because uh, we were helping. It's like a typical uh, family that moved to America looking for bigger dreams. So we were all helping in the restaurant. I was doing my homework. After that, I would take out the trash. My brother would try to learn how to cook uh, chow mein or uh, fried rice. So that kind of thing. Uh, it's a family business that we uh, enjoyed it during that time. Uh, three years. It lasted for three years. So I wanted just, you know, those three years, our papers were secured. And napagod na talaga. Because um, in America, the life there, working is seven days a week. On my parents' day off, they go to the market to buy all the takeout boxes, this and that. I would go with them. And we're closed on Mondays usually. So... They would just, you know, do their, and I, I feel for them. And we felt that it was really for us that they were working for. And of course, typical parents, uh, they want us to be doctors, lawyers, this and that. So yeah, we pursued, we pursued uh, our, our own, you know, dreams. Uh, okay, we'll follow, we'll, we'll follow our parents' dreams, but at the same time, think natin what's going to happen. My brothers were, um, well, he's, they started in UST, then my, my, so medyo ano na sila, uh, their career is basically uh, in, in stone na, kumbaga. And for me, and yeah, and, and me and my, my sister, we were the younger ones, we were still in high school. So I, I basically grew up there, uh, high school, and then my college years, which Sabi ko, sige, I'll try to be a doctor. So I took all the biology classes on my first or uh, first first year. I didn't like it. Sige nga, political science. So I <laughs> pretend to be, want to be a lawyer. So hindi pa rin. Eh, in the States, the two years that you have there, you can go to a junior college to see what you really want to be. So you don't have to spend too much money. So that's what I did. I was searching, searching. Finally, sige. Business management, ala. So I finally took uh, a business management course and graduated from that. And of course, in America, Nancy, you know this. Even if you graduated from business management or something else, you can work anywhere, right? Uh, you could be a wait a waiter or you could be a salesperson or whatever. So at that time, the available job at that time was a merchandiser. Okay. A merchandiser, basically, you know, doing shower curtains, medicine cabinets. Yeah. I would go to a parang Home Depot. It's Home Depot here, there in the States. Dito parang, uh, ano ba yung, uh, basta yung, basta warehouse na mga ano. So I would go there. My job was so easy. I have a company. Ito, ah, first time ko nakakuha ng American Express na Platinum. All I have to do is just... Because my, my, my territory was the West Coast. From Seattle 
uh, Washington, all the way down to San Diego, San Diego, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Boise, Idaho, all the way down, all the way up to Utah. Yeah. So every Monday, we have a man come, you know, okay, this is where you have to go. So swipe lang ng credit card, fly, tapos rent a car, easy job, easy, super easy. I would go to a store, oh, kailangan mo linisin yan, kailangan mag-order ka gaya. The area manager I'll talk to, five minutes, I'm done. And there's probably four stores in an area. Uh, in that area, I would just try to drive around. And after that, the whole day is free for me. So I would, if I'm in San Francisco, I would call my friends, hey, you want to have dinner? Hey, you want to ganyan, ganyan? So we would go to a nice fancy restaurant with, you know, me paying for it, pretending it's my client. I mean, I've learned how to do to get away with it now. Oh, this is my client, you know, I have to talk to. So we would go, yeah, go, at that time, I, the culinary scene for me is nothing. It's like, okay, my friend was like, kain tayo, ganyan, ganyan. Okay, sige, Italian, friend. So we would eat. And then one day, <clears throat> my, my boss, which is a 55-year-old single Caucasian, uh, called me, beeper, my, beeper pa noon eh. So I would see the beeper. You ha- I was in San Francisco. Yeah. Oh, di ba? Tapos, kawag ka sa, sa public phone. Tapos, sabi ko, so when I called him, I said, yes, what do you need? Oh, you have to go to Seattle. Friday yon, Friday. Sabi ko, wow, my weekend is ruined. Kasi alam niya, Friday, umuwi ako. Tapos, you have to go there, meet up the, you know, your supplier, ganyan, ganyan. So when I got there, usually, may sumusundo sa akin. Walang sumundo. So I called, sabi ko, hey, aren't you supposed to take me and then they said, what are you doing here? Uh, well, my boss told me to meet up with you. You know, we, we never called for you. So, bad trip. Book ako ng airplane pa balik ng LA. Talaga, inis na inis ako. Sabi ko, Monday, I asked him, why did you send me to Seattle? Sabi niya, oh, I forgot to message you. I canceled it. So, this guy was scared that, you know, he was giving me a hard time. Was scared to... Because there's two of us, one Mexican, Filipino, a 20-some-year-old, thinking that I, we were going to take his job. So I told myself, wow, I don't like this job. Because it's like every time. So when I was in San Francisco, ito na, I was walking you know, downtown. I see these people wearing toques. Yossi, ganyan, in Polk Street. And I'm, I'm, I was supposed to meet my friend. And it was down the corner, which is... Um, What's his name? Um, uh, it's 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 a restaurant there, and I, Buddy Trinidad work, used to work there or had a uh, stint there. So it's close. Sabi ko, wow, what is this? It's a nice building. Pagpasok ko, sabi ko tingnan ko nga. So ang dami buzzing, talaga people running. Pagbaba ko ganon sa ano? Sabi ko, narinig ako chong chong. Sabi ko, what? Sabi ko Filipino. I mean, only Filipino would say chong. Ano pare? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, ko, you know, I, I could hear it, and, and I, I kid you not, I, I think that was Kito Jose, who always say chong, chong, pare. And that was 1993, I think, 1993. I was, I was inquiring, so I said, what is this, what is this place? Oh, it's a culinary school, so I went to the information, and I said, okay, it looks, it looks nice. Yeah, students cook here from, and I would see different Japanese, you know, Filipino, and mostly, of course, Americans. And and I said, how do I enroll? And at that time, it was I think twenty thousand US dollars. Okay. Wow. So that at that time, yeah. So I go shoot. Okay. So I told myself I'll save money for a year. I'll 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 hold on to this work. It's paying me good. Um, I'll save and I put myself back to school kasi naiyan ako sa parents ko eh because my parents said oh yeah okay na start working your, your job is good so finally sabi ko sige I'll save money so siguro six months later I saved enough I went back to that school I said how how do I get US grant uh, they said easy just apply you'll get a US grant and how does it work they said okay we'll give you this much uh, some you have to pay for after graduation but some, it's given to you by the U.S. government. So I'm like, as long as you show us, you know, your parents or your income, this and that, if it's below the, the average, you know, household, then we can give you a grant. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, fine. Eh, kulang ako mga 10,000. 10,000 dollars yun eh. Nakaipo na ako, siguro mga 10. 
So I said, bala na, see, apply. So I told my parents, I said, uh, first my mom, my mom is, you know, she is, okay, uh, what do you want to do? I, I want to be a chef. Uh, I want to be, uh, I want to do <laughs> cooking. Then, yeah. Okay, sige. And my dad, of course, my dad, I have to, you know, squeeze in to him na pumayag. Sabi niya, what do you want to do? Uh, I think I want to be a pastry chef. chef. Uh, oh no, panidero? Uh, uh, ano, cucinero? You know, that kind of, ano, sabi ko, you know how hard it is? We, we've done that, ganyan niya. Mahala ka. So, I drove myself up to San Francisco with my brother. And then, got an apartment, and I enrolled myself, and then, of course, my parents would visit, and my mom, you know, a typical, uh, siguro, Filipina, that, you know, really, yeah, I'm a mama's boy, eh. so, every time she goes there, she'll give me money, I thought, this is for your rent, because rental there is really crazy. I think at that time, 800 US dollars, it's a wow. studio, studio of probably 10 square meters. Oh, oh, pag bukas mo ng kwarto, kama, re, ano na, uh, sala, <laughs> ano na, uh, kitchen, banyo. Yun lang yun. But it's close to the school. It's called the Tenderloin District, which is, if uh, a lot of people know what San Francisco is, that is the ghetto. That is the bad place where, but it's walking distance. It's in Market Street, so lakad lang. So my mom would give me money and said, oh, don't tell your brothers and sisters, ah, ito, para sa'yo, ganyan, ganyan. So I go, wow, okay. I, and life is getting easier. So I would go to school. I started with culinary. Then I shift myself to baking. So I go, uh, because when I went to the baking lab, grabe, iba, iba, yung, iba yung tao eh. Tahimik, uh, they, they work so clean, very precise, ganyan. So I walked in there, started talking to the chef. So I go, what is this class? Uh, it's baking and pastry. Uh, I think it was uh, a, a one-year program. So I'm like, okay. Uh, so I went to the register. Eh, what if I switch? Because eh, what I noticed about the culinary school, uh, culinary students, they're just, parang uh, gulo They smoke a lot, and I don't smoke though. They were smoking outside. It was iba iba yung dynamics. So I switched. Finally, I I I met some good uh, few friends there. That I, you know, became became very very close. His name is James. Also, uh, in fact, he looks like uh, one of the Beatles guy. Uh, what's his name? Harris, uh, Harrison. Oh, ganon niya. And I asked him. He's about 40, 45 year old at that time. So I go, what are you doing here? You're forty five. Then you want to be a chef? So I said, no. This is being paid by the government. So I go, wow, talaga. So I go, yeah, because I want to switch career. What do you do? So I I'm a manager of a apartment. I manage the apartment. I give, I get free rent, and I get free school. So I get paid. So I go, wow, okay. I, I became so close to him that uh, they call us J and J. So James and James. So this guy, actually, so I go, James, I need help because uh, I'm running out of funds during that time in my culinary days. And it's very difficult, really, being in a culinary school and not having work. It's survival talaga. I would, I would go to Chinatown. I would walk to Chinatown. Siguro mga 30 minutes from where I live. Bring home a pecking duck. Okay? Mura kasi pecking duck eh. And I would do it. I would cook it three ways or five ways just to survive the whole week. I would buy an egg, which I learned from the egg cookery. I would cook it in so many different ways just to survive the whole week. So it was really, to me, a struggle. Of course, I don't want to tell my parents I'm struggling because for them, you know, <laughs> they've done their job and I don't want to, I don't want to hear from my dad, I told you so, di ba? Parang, okay. But my mom will say, oh, kamusta ka na? And then, di ba? Mom will always be mom. So basically this guy, James, you, you need a job? So I go, yeah, I need a job. So I'm like, okay, come with me. Every morning at 6 a.m., para kami Mexicano eh. Okay. Uh. Talk to this girl, Lillian, and we would, uh, I've, I've learned how to do uh, landscaping. Landscaping kami. Sasakay kami ng truck. <laughs> Tapos dadaling kami sa isang, isang place sa San Francisco, which is Protrero Hills, which is the high end. So expensive. Pero pa, pataas siya. We would carry sacks of uh, soil, uh, grass, and we would do their backyard. 
So we were making 15 bucks an hour. And at that time, it was under the table, no tax, nothing. So I go, okay, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. We start at six, we end at, oh, we start at six, we end at 10 or 11, because we have to be at school at two. So 11 usually. So every morning, we think kami sa outside. Pag uulan, cancel trabaho. Sabi niya, okay, we don't have work because it's gonna rain. Okay. Pero pag hindi umulan, eh, sakay na kami. So we would work. We would meet uh, directors, opera singer. Kasi malapit kami sa opera house eh. We would get free tickets of watching opera. Kami dalawa, makakatulog na kami. I mean, we were so tired. The young tickets just come, ganyan. So we were doing all these houses, making money. Ito na. So going to school, ito na sabi, okay, you need to do your OJT. Tapos kami parang, okay, OJT. How do we do that? We're working already. No, you have to apply to hotels. Ganyan. Sabi ko, okay. So, kami ni James, since most of our culinary classmates, they've been working in the industry, kami dalawa, we were left behind. Kung baga, wala kami makuwang OJT kasi lahat sila, we didn't, naunahan na kami. Kung baga sila, para they were, while they were going to class, they were working part-time sa hotel, restaurant. Eh kami, all we're thinking about is money. Eh sila, they're probably not making as much money. So, finally, we landed a uh, Hilton OJT. And then after that, when we graduated, wala rin kami makontrabaho dahil yung mga kaklase namin, may experience na kami. What's your experience? Landscaping. How are you going to transform that? Sabi, sabi, sabi namin, it's, it's art and science. Sabi namin, <laughs> culinary is art and science. And at that time, at that time, di pa ganun ang tingin nila sa culinary. There's no art, there's no science. Basta, you just cook. Diba? Ngayon na lang talaga, it's art and science. And kami, we were trying to beg. And ito na, yung rental ko, yung matatapos na yung, uh, yung term ko for that year. And of course, I was begging to stay there, applying to all the jobs, right? Applying. Uh, finally, sabi ko, uh, I have to go back to L.A. And it's with a heavy heart, San Francisco is a good culinary scene, but I had to go back. So uh, my brother picked me up, got, gathered all my stuff, and on my way back to L.A., somebody calls me. One of the places I applied for, it's in uh, Foley Street. So it's a bakery. Mayon, and I think the name is Anjin, or uh, I don't know if that's the same one, huh? but it's, it's one of the biggest bakery now. When do you want to start? So I go, you know what? Sorry, but I'm, I'm on my way back to LA and I can't take the job. So I told him, Lord, what's happening to my career? I go to my house, right? I and then I would tell my parents, okay, you were right, ganyan, ganyan. So, of course, parents will always open their door. Sige, back, happy sila because Filipino family, they want everybody to stay yeah. with them until they're 50 or 60. Diba? Para, and I'm turning quite close to my 30. So, sabi ko, wow, okay. And finally, sabi ko, I need to apply for a job. And then I was looking at this classified ads. Balit lang ha, looking for a pastry assistant. Apply, Melrose. Ganyan lang, Melrose. So finally, uh, sabi ko, sige, we'll apply. Medyo malayo sa bahay. So when I got there, I got my, siyempre, CV and all of the pictures from my culinary days. Uh, medyo pangit. Uh, I, I would show it to you, but it's nothing to be proud of. So I went there, and there's this uh, pastry chef, uh, Caucasian. Sabi ko, hi, good morning. And um, would you like to see my resume and my portfolio? So I, mean, I don't need to see it. Are you Filipino? So I go, yes, I am. Okay, when do you want to start? And that's it. Huh? That is the easiest. Wow. That was one of the easiest uh, interview. Are you Filipino? Yes. So I go, okay, when do you want to start? I said, uh, that was Thursday or Wednesday, Monday. Okay, be here at 6. So I go, okay, 6 a.m.? Yes, 6 a.m. Okay. And I called my sister. So I go, oh, I applied to this restaurant. And, you know, they hired me. Oh, what's the name of the restaurant? I said, Patina. And my, I could hear my sister screaming on top of her voice. Oh, my God, Patina. Did you know that Patina is the number one restaurant now? So I go, I don't know. It's in Melrose. It's next to Paramount Studio. 
yeah, you know, uh, it's it's actually hard to to get uh, bookings there or reservation this and that. Sabko, really, Sabko, I I don't know. It's just an an ivy wall, tapos small door, and then it's an old building, and it's we only serve dinner and no lunch. Lunch is on Tuesday. They call it power lunch. So, okay. So when I went there, you know, looking at all the history of that that chef, which is Joachim Spical, it's like, oh my God, this guy is, you know, a during the time, yeah, Michelin star are, are known, but at that time it's really the top rating for Zagat. You know, they would they would look at Zagat books. And for me, I'm more familiar with Zagat. Looking at it and then somebody and I remember LA Times, they would rate it. So I'm like, oh, wow. I didn't know. And I would see Wolfgang Puck come to a restaurant because they're both Austrian. They're, they're not German. They want to be called Austrian. We're Austrian. We're not German. So, okay. So I would work. I worked there for uh, three years, I believe. And this is the time where I really didn't know what fine dining is all about. Uh, I've learned that uh, it's very time I spend almost 12 hours a day there I would start at 6 probably go home by 6 before dinner service and then when I'm at dinner service we open at 6 I'll be there early in the morning because you don't want to be screamed at you don't you don't want to be screamed at by Joachim which is my station is right next to him when he's calling the tickets and it was something that I you know I appreciated and in fact the pastry chef there, Victor Cordes, is still my uh, friend right now. And when when my time was when I was about to leave Patina, because uh, the story there behind him hiring me as a Filipino, yeah. Uh, at that time, he had a boyfriend who is Filipino. Oh, so, no. you know, correct boyfriend, ah, huh? boyfriend. Okay, yeah. but anyways, the sad part about that in my second year. He opened up to me, said, you know, I have a Filipino boyfriend, and I noticed that his, his, his way of dealing with people is deteriorating. Kumbaga, always bad mood, ganyan, ganyan. Tapos, talagang, he was James Beard Award na talagang going down. And I asked him, Victor, what's the problem? Sabi niya, I need help. Sabi ko, what, what, what help do you need? Um, sabi niya, I have problems with... Uh, my boyfriend's family in the Philippines. Can you tell me how Filipinos are really? So I go, what do you mean? My boyfriend's dying of AIDS. Okay. So I go, yes. And this family, and this family, we're not even married, but they want, you know, everything that I have to, you know, and he's not even dead yet. So I go, okay. So what, what, what do you want to know? So I mean, are Filipinos that way? Because I, I never saw it with my boyfriend that, you know, it's all about money. So I go, no, not, not every Filipino. So when I visited his his boyfriend, I kid you not, that was it just breaks my heart. He was in the living room, skinny, and I think his days were numbered at that time. And and he said, James, I have to quit. So I because why why do you have to quit? Because I need to take care of him before, you know, I want to spend more time with him. So I because okay, so what's gonna happen? So Sabina, so okay, hold on to this this position, and I know someday you'll do well. Because I've seen you work so hard, this and that, in spite of me not seeing your your background, your capabilities. But I know, you, you know, I, it makes me feel good when, you know, when he was telling me you have a good heart, this and that. So I'm like, okay. So finally, he left and this, this French guy came in. His name is Fabrice. So this guy came from the cruise line. So I'm like, and this guy is a funny guy. I mean... Typical French, no problem. Even lang yung word na English na alam niya. Chef, I'm gonna do this, no problem. Chef, I'm gonna turn this, uh, no problem. I mean, all of the things that he does is no problem. So finally, one day, this guy was really, uh, how should I say, uh, a different level talaga. I mean, uh, he just thinks he's the best of out of the best. Of course, the Austrian chef, the Joachim, never liked that. So he got fired. He left. So finally, I had to, to man it for a couple of months until this guy Fabrice calls me. So I mean, James, I really like you. So I'm like, oh, yes. So why don't you, uh, would you like to 
to move with me to Four Seasons. Ayun na, yung career ko, from uh, restaurant, going to, to hotel. The Four Seasons. Sabi ko, um, yeah, but where is it? Newport Beach, Four Seasons. I got this job. I really like you. I want to bring you along with me as my assistant. Sabi ko, um, sabi ko, I'm only here three years and it's been going so well. We've been doing the Emmys. We've been doing all these you know, catering with that uh-huh. restaurant and of course meeting all these people. Sabi niya, no, no, but this is a different story. I'll pay you this much. You, They'll take care of you. So I had to talk to my chef. Sabi ko, Joaquin, I, I didn't say it was the French guy who was getting me. Sabi ko, Joaquin, I have, I have to, you know, try something different. Sabi niya, it's up to you. And in fact, that's where I met Walter Mansky. Walter worked at Patina. We were there uh-huh. at the same time. I, I forgot to send you the pictures there. So Walter is a very, how should I say, uh, very quiet guy, only smiles. He was our chef de cuisine. So Walter, you know, I, I would see him, he would just smile. Very, I know, but very, I, I knew he was very talented because my, my chef, Joachim, will send the promising chef to Europe for a stint for three months, come back and make sure you stay with me for the next two years. Parang ganun nangyari kay Walter. And if, if I'm not mistaken, that's what he did. He went to Europe, came back. I met him there. And then we worked together probably for about six months before I left. Wow. So I went to the Four Seasons. Uh, and it's a totally different game. I kid you not. It was, it was something that I am very thankful that I was able to experience. A company that is uh, caring about their employees loving and really one of the things that i learned is uh ito na yung tagla ko sa ikuma eh. home away from home when you treat your customer it has to be home away from home meaning they come to your hotel you make them feel like they're at home diba? and that's it carried on um we were owned by uh, a canadian firm which is a four season our manager is an Iranian guy, uh, very, very good pastry chef. Uh, at that time, uh, it was, became my best friend, which is now in uh, Raffles, oh no, uh, in Miami, or Miami or yeah, in Florida. Uh, it, it's something that I would always be thankful because at that time, that was 9-11 also. Uh, we were one of the spotted hotels at that time that we were going to be bombed and, and all things fall. I mean, everything just with, with the, the functions that we had. Parang nangyari, ito eh, I experienced it with Ikumay na nangyari during our COVID time na nawala lahat ng function, nawala lahat yung trabaho, but we were still going to work. And siguro it prepared me also how to brace it and we had the 9-11 during that time and working in a hotel, which is uh, five-star, uh, I should say, uh, not, not yeah, they call it triple A. Yeah, triple A uh, hotel. Yeah, and I remember that time we lost one of the, the stars that we have, or diamonds, sorry, diamond hotel. We lost one of the diamonds, and this is how tedious uh, how we are. Uh, we lost the diamond because there was this secret uh, client that would go into the hotel and check everything from uh, restaurant to your rooms. And, and you know what they found in our room just to take out the diamond? There was a piece of hair underneath the bed. Na nakalimutan linisin. And we were stripped of that for one year. And I was part of that and, you know, our, our goal is to get it back. Isipin nyo, it's a hair, a hair, a strand, a strand of hair. Uh-huh. And that was it. That was the, the end of that, you know, uh, Diamond Hotel. But we got it back a year after. But, Galing. you know, I was, uh, I, yeah, I, I worked there for a while mm-hmm. until I went back to the Philippines in 1999. Uh, uh, through exhaustion, depression, oh, depression, exhaustion. Talaga, you know this, Nancy, working in America is just, it will drain you out. It will drain you out. 
there was a story in between that I, I probably not, you know, I won't tell the story behind that, why I went back to the Philippines. Yeah. But, um, but the Four Seasons took care of me. They said, okay, uh, sabi nila, we're gonna open Four Seasons in Manila. Okay, sabi ko, really? Yeah. Bukas ba? Uh, but can you check yeah. out this place? No, 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 they, they were planning. This was 99 when I went here. They were planning. You know the insular life there in Paseo? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There was supposed to be a four season there. And that was, that was when I went here in 1999. Of course, I said, I'm going back to the Philippines for, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to be there. Hey, can you check this out? You know, uh, there's a place in Palawan also, and there's in Manila. Can you check this out? And then Sarah was here. The, the HR was telling me, okay, this is where it is. Insular life, blah blah blah. So I go, oh, it's a very nice location. And finally, this is the the breaking point that I said, okay, if I stay in Manila, I'll be have, I'll be able to have a job. So I Manila, it's not gonna fall through. So I go, why? Uh, because we're a management team, and at that time, Ayala wants to manage it um, because Ayala owned that property. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's one of the four season rule that when we come in. It's our managing team. So that means if we come in and you're there, you're going to be part of Ayala Group, not Four Seasons. So what's that mean? We're pulling back. So ito, sabi ko, shoot, wala akong trabaho, di ba? Parang nag-hiatus lang ako eh. So at that time, I opened two restaurants here, 1999 or year 2000. Parang ganun, 2000. 99, 2000. Uh, famous Mike in Libis. Okay, it's a billiard place at that time. Libis at that time, panay talahib yan. All talahib, C5. And it ends right there going up to Katipunan. Famous Mike was a billiard place, has 15 tables of Korean billiard tables uh, owned by, ito, uh, one of the owners is my brother who moved there also. And then 19 of them. So 20 owners yon. Sabi ko, wow. All I have to do is do a menu for them. So why uh -huh. famous Mike? Because in the States, they asked me to buy all, all the posters of famous Mike. Michael Jackson, Michael Keaton, uh, <laughs> sino pa ba? Mike, Mike Francis. Yung mga ganon. Talaga, pag pumasok ka doon, oh, pag pumasok ka doon, all these posters, we framed it. Nasa ano? And uh, I tell you, none of the owners is named Mike. Wala. Wala sa 20, walang Mike ka. So, it's a spot where, if you remember, uh, Don Enrico's, Shusia, Shusia ba yun? Shusia. Tapos nasa likod kami. Mm. Sa Frabel building. It's a Frabel. Kami lang yung tatlo doon. Tapos meron pa sa taas, Aqua. Aqua. Ah. Tapos Don Enrico's kami. Tapos yun. Uh -oh. So, yes. when I went there, when I went there, so what's the job? Sabi nila, oh, you run the, the kitchen, you run the restaurant. So I go, wow, parang ano na ako, F&B. So I, I, I run the whole thing. I, I, I tell you, ah, we had the busiest out of that whole strip. Ah. Dati, pwede mag-park sa C5 noon eh. Tapos may valley parker pa ako. Siguro lima yun. Papark nila yung mga kotse. Wala, wala talaga ang kotse doon. Racing, ano yun eh. Sa gabi, uh, okay. karirahan yun eh. So, the thing is, what do we do? Sabi ko, what menu do you want? Ah, do you, can you, can you uh, cook sisig? Can you do this? Ko, I, I don't know sisig at that time. Honestly, clueless. What is sisig? What's salpicao? And at that time, that's ano. And at that time, uh, my wife is good friends with Robbie Goko. Sabi ko, Robbie, tulungan mo naman ako. And at that time, Tequila Joe's has the best. Honestly, uh, for me, at that time. Uh, salpicao. For me, it's, sabi ko, Rob, okay to. Yan. Tapos, sabi niya, papakita ko sa'yo, uh, in Glorieta, we are the only restaurant has a walk-in freezer and chiller. Wow, bilib ka mo, Robbie, okay ito. Ah. Talaga siya yung ano, tequila joes. Yeah. So, tapos sabi ko, ano yung sisig? Sabi niya lang, punta ka ng densos. Masarap ang sisig doon. So, tikim lang. I was just, I furious. So sabi ko, in order for me to survive, I need to have a good team underneath me. So I hired a chef or assistant from um, Whistle Stop. Pag titignan mo yung menu na Whistle Stop, diba? parang all over the world, di ba? Uh -huh. So sabi ko doon sa assistant ko, kaya mo gawin yan, kaya mo gawin yan. Chef, 
Kaya ko lahat yan. Kasi tingnan mo naman menu sa Wisa Stop. Kaya ko gawin. Hi, name is Chicken. Kaya ko gawin. Lahat talaga. So, lahat. the owners were saying, okay, we need to be innovative and all that. Sabi ko, sige. So, that was, when I did the seasick there, gusto ko kasi, hindi basa. Gusto ko crunchy. So, I told the guy, do the seasick, the normal seasick, and then at the end, you put on the chicharon. Tsaka mo lang haluin. Huwag mo lulutuin para, ano, para maluto. Tapos, sabi ko, ano ba pinitigan niyo dyan? Chef Kalamansi. So, at that time, uso yung mga liquor-liquor eh. So, meron ako nakita lemon liquor. Okay? I think Ralph's was selling it at that time. So, sige, bila na lemon liquor. What I want is, we call it flaming sisig. Sabi niya, ano yung flaming sisig? Meron kang, meron kang ramikin sa gitna, palit ng sisig, lalagyan natin yung liquor, sisinda mo yung, yung liquor. So, umaapo yan. Tapos, pagkatapos, pag namatay na yun, you killed all the alcohol, buhos mo ngayon doon sa sisig mo. So, may show. So, every time the wait staff will walk, umaano yan. Para, sabi ko, parang nakita ko rin kay Ravi yung opa niyang, you know, it's just uh, flaming. So, yun, bubuhos ngayon ng wait staff yun. So, that's one of our famous, ano, famous mic. It's uh, flaming sisig. And then, I do all these uh, uh, muscles that has, at that time, wasabi aioli and tobiko. Mm. And at that time, Japanese, you know, tepura lang, ganyan. So, so we we bake it and then the wasabi aioli will melt on top and we'll have tobiko and all that. So it was it was doing very well. In fact, we sell 21 cases a day. Yung San Miguel nga, nalilito na, dumarating yung truck. Chef, sino bang miinom? Sino bang miinom dito? Bakit araw-araw 21, 20 cases? And at that time, I have no clue. Basta, okay lang, kita. In six months, we got our ROI. Wow. During that time. So, sabi ko sa mga owners, oh, okay to. So, what do you guys want to do? Oh, just keep running it. So, at that time, How uh, long Christine San Diego, which is a good How friend long also. Long? No? Yeah, siguro, lumipat pa sila ng place dyan sa ano, or tea, kasi I left there after six months because no, you left. Uh, I couldn't work with the Filipino staff. No, it, it's hard eh. I tell you, during that time, you would train somebody, you turn your back. Oh, ba't mo ginagawa yan? Sabi ko, balsamic reduction yan eh. Shit, kasi baho eh. Shortcut na lang natin. And at that time, they don't know what balsamic reduction is. Di ba? Parang, paano ginagawa yan? Eh, chef. So every time I turn around, iba yung ginagawa ng mga kusinero. And my bartender, which is one of my best bartender, came from a cruise line, uh, was stealing uh, money from us, which I didn't know. Kasi on his day off, may dumating na salesperson, chef. Kanina ko bibigay itong check in to. Anong check yan? Uh, sa bartender mo, question niya. Bakit? Every time you sell a bottle of wine, he gets X amount of ano. So, yung bar ko, nakakadena yan. Nilalako yan sa gabi. So, binuksan ko yung bar. Pag gano'n ko, binuks ko pa na yung tubig yung laman ng mga bote. So, wow. basically, he was just ordering and ordering and dumping everything para, para you know, makakuha ng commission. But the, the funny thing is, when Christine San Diego asked me to open Flute, Flute is the one in Salcedo, across from Makati Sports. It's a small uh, French bar. So, yung bartender na yun, kinuha ko para to open up, tulungan yung bar. So, pagdating ko doon, daladala ko yung check niya. Sabi ko, oh, ito na. Nap napagadan siya. Sabi niya, chef, sorry. Kasi, I mean, uh, typical story, may, may sakit yung anak ko, kailangan ko gawin to. Sabi ko, you know what, you can, you can trust me, di ba? Sabi ko, umuwi ka na, umalis ka na, I don't need you. And at that time, sabi ko, I had to let go of that uh, place because Christine was asking me, can you just start up? So, siguro, I was there for a couple of months just to have Christine. Okay. And then, I told myself, um, I have to leave. And at that time, my, my, my wife now was my girlfriend. Sabi ko, I cannot live here. Because if that's how Filipinos are, you give everything you got, you turn around, they stab you in the back. I cannot work. And this is where my story begins because that's where the Four season accepted me back after a year. Sabi nila, okay. Sabi ko, one condition, sabi ko, can I, bumalik ako sa state, sabi ko, one condition, uh, can I have my 401k back? And then uh, my salary, I hope you don't give me probation and this. Sabi ng executive chef, which is one of my ninong sa kasal, 
go ahead. Yeah, we, 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 you got, we got you covered. You know, uh, sabi ko, wow, this is a really good company. And at that time, it was a long distance relationship between me and Mitzi, my wife. Uh, she was living here. And I was living there, and finally we decided to get married in the States, 2002. Uh, we got married at the Four Seasons in this. And then we were, I couldn't leave my job. I, I loved so much being in the hotel and being in that, learning so much. And finally, you know, uh, my wife took a board exam. She's a dentist, and she passed the exam, you know. We worked together, working on that exam, so to, for her to move to America. So we got married 2002, and then separated for one year. And my pastor said, okay, you have to decide one year before your anniversary, because husband and wife should be together. You know, there's no sense of you. And creating a family, okay? Creating a family. Parang all W nga ako eh. And... We were separated for a year. One year before the first year anniversary, she came to the States. I go, wow, okay, okay na to. Uh, moving na siya. And I would continue on my career. And she has a practice here in the Philippines. She would let go of that practice. You know what she said to me? Siguro, strong Filipino women. Pack up your things. All you have is your knife kit. And let's move to Manila. <laughs> Ako parang, uh, you know, I, it's... It's something that, you know, I've been there, done that, I tried it, and it doesn't work for me. So finally, so I'm uh, you know, I, I made that vow, you know, for better or for worse, pag worse, wala sisihan, di ba? For better, then all good, di ba? So I moved, I moved there. You moved I didn't back. know anyone because that, that 2004, 2004, or 2003, December. So it's on a weird month that I couldn't get a job. Siyempre, ako living like uh, on vacation. Uh, apply, apply, apply in hotels, this and that. So I applied in, uh, I applied in uh, New World, which I got hired, long story. Uh, I applied in uh, Amampulo, which I stayed for one week, long story. Didn't like it. I was bored. Uh, the chef said, my interview, at the interview, niya, it's not about culinary, ah, the Swiss chef. Uh, we interviewed pa nga sa Somerset doon sa Olympia. Sabi niya, do you know how to swim? Sabi ko, yes. Do you scuba dive? I can learn. Do you like the water? Uh, yeah, I can deal with the beach. Okay. Uh, why don't you come over? Sabi, aren't you going to talk about the culinary, you know, what I, so no, because a lot of them, you know, that's what, we can do in in that resort the beaches swim scuba and that's it the culinary it will just come to you because we know you know uh, you don't lose that that skill Kumbaga, you can enhance it but uh it'll still be, sabi ko, wow. so pagdating ko talaga doon kailangan ko talaga matuto the beach life Kumbaga, the resort na talagang bored so I didn't take that job, and then, you know, Peninsula, which is uh, Chef Dahl, was, you know, very, very nice, and said, when can you come to work? I said, okay, I'll come to work. Um, so of course, the rate is, the, at that time, uh, was important to me, at that time, huh? Sabi niya, well, I cannot give you an expat rate, since you Filipino, and you can speak the language. Sabi ko, but ganun, and we can only... Since 9-11, we can only one, hire one uh, expat in our hotel. And at that time, it was, uh, it was very low. And it was six days a week here in, this, in the Philippines. Unlike in the States, it's five days, diba? Parang. And then I met uh, Philip Golding. Uh, mm -hmm. I had dinner at Azuro. And he's the one, actually, I, uh, I'm very thankful with Philip because he's the one who actually introduced me to... Uh, I guess the stepping stone here in the Philippines, which is Center for Culinary Arts. I mean, it's CCA was actually, was the job that I took as the uh, program's director. Uh, how ironic, I went to a CCA school in San Francisco, which is California Culinary Academy, and I ended up working 
here in CCA in Manila, which is, I tell you, uh, you go on the list of chefs here in the Philippines, one way or the other, they are associated with CCA. Whether they're a student, an instructor, or an alumni. Imagine all of that. You go from Chef Jay Gamboa, Fernando Aracama, Buddy Trinidad, Quito Jose, Romel Hinlo, Tuli Tuli Yan, Latsan, Brando Santos, Mike Yap, Joey Herrera, which was my one of my first hire in CCA. Joey, ano yan? I'll tell you a story about Alam ni Nancy to. Okay. Uh, Joey, J Joey thinks on his own, in a different way. Very artistic, very creative. And Nancy knows that. Pasawayan. And Joey knows that. Okay? When Joey was single, when Joey was single, he's just out there and trying to look for the right people to, uh, to I guess, he, he likes teaching. He likes uh, mentoring. So, it's, it's so how ironic that it was a culinary school that, you know, when he applied, ano yan eh? uh, he was, I would say he was very confident, very confident on what he does. Uh, and one of the fondest memories of me and Joey was when he does his exam. When he does his exam, papakita sa akin, Chef, pwede ba to? Sa ko, ano yan? Parang puzzle yan, Chef. Uh, at the end, may nakasulad dyan, Apo Hiking Society. Kasi kung multiple choice, yun yung lalabas doon sa multiple choice. Ganun siya ka-creative na talagang Apo Hiking or Apo Hiking Society. Parang, oh, Tito Vic and Joey. Yung mga ganun, may patawa siya. Uh, matching type, matching type, o kaya uh, multiple choice. Basta lalabas doon. Sabi ko, bakit mo ginagawa? One is probably what I learned from this, madaling korekan. When you check the papers, alam mo na, madali, di ba? Pag ako hiking suicide or, or Tito Vic and Joey, check, 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 di ba? Yun lang na eh. Which me, per se, when I check papers, I'm having a hard time. Kaya yung sekretary ko, ikaw mag-check lang yan. Kasi we would have a hundred students. Imagine checking those papers. It would take you a lot of time. At that time, we were on our peak, uh, 2007. We have the highest number of students. And Joey, I kid you not, and all the chefs, they were doing double, double shift. Morning class, afternoon class. And the, the good thing about that is... Oh, nawala siya. Ganda ng story, ah. Bakit Ninong ang tawag ko dyan, eh? Ano? Bakit, bakit Ninong ang tawag mo? Eh, kasi he was at the wedding of Joey. Ninong si Chef Rox Kailaw. All these chefs gathered in, ano... Chef James, what happened to you? Yeah, you pero ang galing ang galing ng story niya, no? And, yeah. and, and that's why I love doing this, uh, yeah. ano, set. Yeah. 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 So, sorry, ah. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Continue. Ay, nawala ako. Ano nangyari doon? Um, sige, before uh, you continue, we'll acknowledge lang the people comment. Yeah. Uh, si Gerard Oscar Hendrano. Hello, Chef. Hey, Hello. Chef Gerard. Yeah. One of my good students, good instructor. During my culinary days. Uh, Jam, also, De La Flor, Hello Chef James, Leo Ong, uh, and Patrick Guzman. Chef, ang, galing, ang ganda ng story mo, ah. I think, uh, yeah. we'll kick off, um, we'll, let's take the... Sorry, masyado mahaba, ah. Sobrang haba yeah, talaga. Yeah, so, hindi ko alam. Uh, ganda um, ng story. And uh, these are the stories uh, we need to hear, no? Uh, yeah. From, uh, from the chef, from, kasi ito yung origin story uh, talaga. And, Maybe let's yeah. go to the photos But, muna. Pakita, pakita po siyang kay Joey. Ano oh, nangyari? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Hindi, you, you know what? Joey, Joey, Joey and I uh, goes way back. In fact, ito Nancy. Uh, I, I'm always proud to say that I gave him a restaurant of his own to run. Which oh, is, yeah. which is, ito, ito. Kasi I was piloted by Martin Lorenzo, which I went to Pancake House to open a culinary school which is in, uh, ang, ang tawag namin doon sa ano, restaurant ni Joey's The Loop. Okay? The Loop because it is on the loop of Ayala going around. Oh, yung, canton, yung canton ng ano ngayon, FEU ngayon. That thing's really building. Really? So that was a culinary school. 
And I told Joey when I got him from CCA. Uh, sabi ko, Joey, uh, there's, a, there's a restaurant because I want to have a restaurant slash a culinary school. And all of your students will be, you know, doing their OJT and in the future will be hired to, to be in that kitchen. Would you run it? And one of the instructors was Joey. One of the original instructors was Joey. It's called, uh, gosh, ano ba pangalan lang yan? Instituto, ay, Institute of Culinary Arts. Oh, parang ganun eh, Institute of Culinary Arts. Which is, Martin's idea was to run a culinary school. Eventually, these students will be in Pancake House, then shows Teriyaki Boy. We have eight brands at that time. Uh -huh. So that was the idea of putting a standard once they graduate is be able to hire them and work in these eight or 10 different brands of uh, time. And Joey was the highlight of that culinary school. Uh, and then I left, I left again. I, I opened another culinary school with uh, Sullivan, which is the one on top of Sisu, which mm. is you know, Instituto Culinario. Uh, that uh, was an amazing journey for us because not only that we run the culinary school, we run cafeteria uh, with Fernando Aracama, myself, uh, and the rest of the faculty, uh, Jerome Valencia, uh, AL, uh, doing the cafeteria downstairs at the same time running a culinary school. At the same time, I brought in Cyril with me mm -hmm. to open Sisu there. Uh, I told Cyril because I want, I want, I want my culinary school to have a, a restaurant. What more is to learn from a chef like, you know, that caliber of uh, Cyril. So most of our students were actually doing their OGT, which is one of them is Mike Santos. One of oh, my students okay. who actually, you know, interned know there. In, it was uh, really good. Tisu was really good. So what happened? Yeah. yeah. I ate um, okay. It was good, but I think it was, eh, me and Cyril both agreed. Maybe we were in the lo wrong location. Because if you look at Green Hills, mostly it's all Chinese restaurant, right? uh, uh, okay. To have a French restaurant. But the, the thing is, they had a good run. Uh, and amazing run, I tell you. Uh, a cheap rental wouldn't hurt, diba? Right? Parang uh, that's the deal that we have to cut with them. Uh, not only that, um, we turned out a lot of good students from there. Actually, uh, that you know went on to their culinary uh, in Davao. There's one in Davao. I think one of the there places. There was no parking there. space. Isa pa yon. Oh, problem na parin yon. Yun yung ano namin. But I tell you, it's sayang eh. uh, Cyril was there for, uh, I would say, four years or even more. Uh -huh. Tapos, yan yan. Yeah. And then, after that, I, you know, I had to move again to another culinary school, which I was hired by um, in Cavite, Remulia. So uh, it's a very low-key culinary school. So I was building culinary school because I, I think what I learned from CCA is you have to start the foundation. You okay. have to start from the bottom. And this is how I met all these students, where uh, it's not all about, uh, you know, uh, being the top chef. It's actually working your way up. It's not like once I graduate from CCA, I want to be an executive chef. No, we have to teach them. You really have to work from the bottom. And I must say, I was proud to say I was a dishwasher in the States uh, for two weeks, uh, just, you know, uh, when I was 15 years old, I just want to be with my friends to work with them. Most of them are waiters. So when I applied, the owner said, here, is the only available job. No, I want to be a waiter because they're getting tips. They're getting this. No, no. You work as a dishwasher. So I work as a dishwasher. I work at Taco Bell. And I always tell my students that was my first job, part-time job, Taco Bell. And, and a lot of chefs know this, close friends of mine. I hate Mexican food. Why? And I have to explain it to them because, you know, I work at Taco Bell and I was doing pinto beans and it sticks on you. When you do pinto beans, it sticks on your clothes, sticks on your skin. You come home, you smell like a burrito or something or a beans, you know, a walking bean. So the thing is, every time they would kid me like uh, Jay, 
Gamboa and Fernando, tara, kain tayo nung, ng Mexican. And they know, I would say no. You know, I would say no. You know, bahala na kayo. And buddy will always say, tara, you know. And what, what cuisine is close to you? I mean, that you uh-huh. really enjoy ah. or you feel you like um, it? Okay. Before, okay, of course, I, I've learned the California cuisine before, which is, it's hard to explain, but uh, that's what I grew up, where I grew up. Uh, and then when I came into the Philippines, my first really was, I, I want to marry the French and the Japanese together. Wow. But it's, wow. A bit, but, but it's, it's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult because yeah. I am not a, a French chef, so that I would leave that to Cyril or to other chefs that are capable of doing that. But honestly, my love right now is uh, Japanese cuisine uh, because my wife, she studied in Japan, in Nagoya, and we go there at least twice twice a year. And we would visit and I saw how a simple dish will come out in a different way. And it's so meticulously done, precise, so clean, so neat. So. When I met these Japanese partners of mine, Hide and uh, Taro, ta- taro uh, I really fell in love with this cuisine where they taught me. Uh, Hide was the chef. Taro was the, uh, our marketing guy, creative guy. Uh, they showed me that uh, simple things can be put to the next level in a simpler way. You don't have to exert too much effort. Uh, it's one of the things that if you ask me 15 years ago or 30, 20 years ago, would you open a Japanese restaurant in the Philippines? I would say no. Here, when I opened six years ago, Ikumai, I was very confident because a lot of our Filipino friends, they travel to Japan. Okay, yeah. It's not very hard for me to explain what we're trying to do. Right, and like 20 years ago, you have to explain everything to them. Here, I put out a Torikawa, they know exactly. And in fact, they're the ones who would even suggest, Can you put out this, this, this? Oh, oh how did you know about that? Oh, because I went to Osaka and I saw this. That kind of thing, you know, it's, it's one of the things that me per se, it's not a hard sell doing Japanese cuisine, right? It's easy to the palate. Uh, a lot of times, um, th- these are one of the top three cuisines here in the Philippines. Well, it is the top three, I would say. Uh, of course, the Chinese, it's there. Japanese, and of course, Filipino cuisine. And there comes the Spanish, the Thai, and uh, the Japanese will always be on the top, where a lot of these people will enjoy uh, what, they, what we put on the table. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy to fall in love. I mean, it was easy to fall in love with, with Japanese cuisine. Uh, what happened during the, the pandemic? Like, pandemic yeah. with uh, during the pandemic, okay. Uh, of course, my Japanese partner, one of them, had to go home. Or no, actually, didn't have to go home. He was on vacation February 20 to March 15. Okay, <laughs> after Valentine's, sabi ko, sige, take a break and go to Japan, and we are Nagoya cuisine. Nagoya is um, spot on, you know, uh, doing, we're famous with uh, tebasaki and miso. We make our own miso, uh, tebasaki, and of course, the karage is one of our famous ones. So these are, and we are uh, street food on sticks. But anyways, during pandemic, uh, my Japanese partner went on vacation, and you know, the lockdown started March 15. Uh-huh. So he was, he was not allowed to come back. My other partner stayed on with us till October uh, of 2020. The thing is, uh, it was a struggle for us because, as you all know, Japanese is not a takeout cuisine. Yeah. Okay? Uh, this is how we learn how to pivot, uh, how to do takeout boxes, bento boxes on a takeout. Uh, something that you would take home and still feel like it's ikomai that you're you're eating uh with meaning the the feel of it the the food itself uh maybe the the ambiance won't be the same but 
at least the food itself, when you take it home, there's an ikumai feel. Like I said, home away from home. Now you are home and actually uh, indulging with our uh, food. We try to be creative. We try to do, on our first two months, my manager asked me, Chef, can we do do it yourself, uh, uh, take out boxes? So I go, okay, how do you, how do you, okay, the buta kokuni, we, well, we sous vide our buta kokuni, but all you have to do is cut the bag and then cook it on your own. Uh, the karage, it's already, all you have to do is deep fry it, that kind of stuff. But what I learned after a couple of months, it was just a fad because people mm -hmm. would buy it and then would call me and say, ano ba to? Pina bumili na nga kami sa inyo, pinapagod nyo pa kami, pinagluto nyo pa kami. Di ba? Kami pa nag-put together, di ba? Bigyan mo na lang sa akin yung luto na, di ba? Sabi ko nga eh, wow, okay, so maybe it's time to, you know, pivot to another thing, you know. So we, we, we try to be innovative with all these things kasi it's very hard with the government saying, Okay, lockdown, take out only. Okay, lockdown, outdoor only. Okay, bawal ng bata, bawal ng matanda. Okay, lockdown. Okay, alfresco. Uh, okay, uh, indoor dining, 20%. This and that. And it's so hard. It was just going, you know, we were going crazy. What do we do? We just followed whatever the government will tell us. Okay, we check the temperature, this and that. Until finally there was a... DOT from Canada or a consultant from Canada that visited Ecomine. So, sabi ko, what are you doing here? Oh, we are the one who's installing cameras to all hospitals here. We were asked to be consultant. And all of the, supposed to be the, the workers from all these hospitals has an RFID uh, name badge. So the camera will shoot that and they'll count how many times they wash their hands, you know, what they're doing. So, nakikita na, nagkatali sila. So, there are hospitals like, you know, Makati Med, this and that. So, he visited my restaurant. Sabi niya, he's looking. Sabi niya, okay, how, how are you doing? So, oh, we're struggling. So, during that time, my waiters were wearing gloves. Okay. Of course, face mask, face shield, all the works what the government was, ano. Ang wala lang kami yung barricade na shield between facing each other. So, sabi niya, I'm comfortable with that. So go with what? Them wearing gloves. So okay, yeah, it's it's one of the the rules that we're supposed to follow. Yeah, but if they wash their hands, do you think they would replace it? Or they would wash it with the gloves and then go back to work? And then after washing it, they put their hands on their pocket, this and that, and then taking orders in this and that. Are you comfortable with that? So I go, well, they've touched so many things. Correct, precisely. I'd rather not have them gloves and wash their hands every every so often and people will see that instead of them wearing these gloves and if you're if you can afford it replacing it every time they touch something more power to you but i know you can so <laughs> yun tanggal kami oh ano pa? nakita niya oh that pump every pump on the table okay ba or is it for show that you have sanitizing thing every table sabi ko yeah, it's good. No, you pump it. A customer will pump it, gunon, and then leaves, and then the next customer pumps it, touches his face. So, what's the use? Not unless your staff will wipe it every time they touch it. And you have time for that. Why don't you just get the automatic thing and put it on one specific area so people will go up, you know? And uh -huh. so, okay. I, I mean, we learn. I tell you, we learn so many things with this guy, you know. And you know what? The funny thing is, every day is a learning experience for us for the, the last, what, three years this March 15. Uh -huh. right? And every step, it makes us better. It, it won't be a perfect place to be at. I guarantee you, Ikumai is not a perfect place to be at. But what we can do is, it's better than yesterday. Because practice makes it better. I always tell my student, it's not going to be perfect. In my eyes, Maybe, because I judge a culinary competition. In my eyes, maybe it's perfect, but in someone's eyes, they can see mistakes. So it's not going to be perfect. But in, in the student's way of doing things, it's better than yesterday what he did. So to me, it's just making things better each day. And the only person who can say it's perfect is the one above us and say, okay, that is perfect. And I have no question for that. 
But for me, I will always question somebody when somebody scores 100 points. There will be a mistake there somehow, somewhere. You know, whether it's sanitation that we didn't see in the beginning, right? Or the end product that maybe, uh, maybe somebody did it if it's a display, di ba? Pag display yan, di mo naman alam, sino gumawa eh. Di ba? It could be 10 people doing a display of a showpiece. Uh, things like that. So in Ikumai, I will always say, guys, my staff, you know, it's not going to be perfect. But as long as at the end of the day, we did something good, we touched somebody's heart and somebody's palate, and they come back for two reasons. Good food, good service. And that's how I always tell them when I hire them, be good, do good, work hard. Be good, be good to yourself. Do good, do good to others. Work hard and God will provide the rest. Yun lang yun. And they will go, okay. And they remember that. Be good, do good, work hard. So uh, we survived this three years. It's not big. Yes, because of our effort. But honestly, it's his guidance. Because, because we, we, I mean, I would do something this day and all of a sudden I'll change it. Because kumbaga, he would tell me, oh, you, you can't do that. Uh, and I, 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 I always feel that there's always a reason why it didn't happen that day. And I, yes, it's a common thing for us to blame someone. But at the end of the day, you go, Lord, bakit ba? And why is the reason? Is it for us to learn? Because we are doing something wrong. That's why tomorrow we correct it. You know, Lord, bakit sales ko ganito lang? And we, honestly, uh, every time we pray, and I would, because we pray at 10 and 5 before service. And, and my staff knows that. If they're listening right now, we would do a briefing before lunch service and dinner service. And I would lead the prayer. But towards the end, sila na yung nag-lead. And I could hear them, what they're asking for. It's really for a lot of things. But most commonly, is financial provision for everyone and good health. Okay? And, and for me, learning that sabi ko, asking for things it will not come today tomorrow but in his time usually yun yun sabi ko lord i know pag nagsara ko i feel bad with his employees and i feel for them because uh, where do they go so help me in in his time he was really putting all these stepping stones for us we struggled i tell you and i told you earlier Yes, I, I won't be ashamed to say we owe people money, but to the fact that we are trying our best to pay them back during these hard times. Hindi kami nakakalimot. We were still moving forward with them because without them, we won't be able to move forward. Without us, they won't be able to move forward. So I always tell them, let's work together. Um, and a lot of them, I have a good relationship with them since with my CCA days. Uh, my competition days where they sponsor me for competition, whether it's international or local, PCC, and they know who they are. And they're always there for us. And sabi nga nila, kung sinabi ni Lord, I will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Then I would, I would try to do the same thing with most of them. I wouldn't say all of them because some of them have already kind of left us. So I can't do anything about that. It's just a matter of them sticking it, you know, with us or me sticking it with them. But if they have to walk away, I won't force them. But honestly, Ikuma is such a blessing because I've met a lot of good people. Uh, a lot of them really helped me. This restaurant wouldn't be uh, open without the help of other chefs. And of course, my wife who was pushing me. Chef, puno puno na yung notes ko. Go to your photos already. Kasi mamaya, I yeah. want to. Oh, sige. Oh, nice. <laughs> Galing. So, yun. Ang dami. Dami talaga yung story. Sabi ko nga, when, when, when you approach me, sabi ko, wow, this is gonna be difficult. But I want to tell everyone what really happened. And uh, there's no there's no keeping uh, uh, stories. Talagang, uh, sabi ko nga, parang recipe yan eh. Uh -oh. You don't you, you you share your recipe. Why? At the end of the day, you know, you want your legacy to continue. Whether it's good or bad, it's there for them to use. 
pag namatay ako, hindi ko naman madadala yan sa ano eh. Baka pagalitan pa ako ni Lord, sabihin, ba't di mo shinare? Diba? Parang, it's one of the things. My staff knows that. There, there's a book of recipes on top of my office. And once in a while, they will go up there, grab it, and, and look at it. There's no secrets. Okay. Yeah. So this is PCC right there, that picture right there. It's one of my, uh, really, my love, my love, my happy days. Yes. So yan yung aking ano, love talaga. That is our competition, competition days. Uh, with me and Buddy, when we competed the first Asian pastry cup in Asia. So, actually, that's the second one. 2006 yung una. Diyan ko nakilala ko si Buddy 2006. This is, again, uh, PCC. Uh, proud of where we are right now. Thank you to Joel and Paolo Domingo. They are uh, the, alam mo yan, Nancy, hardworking people. Talaga, they brought this thing to where it's supposed to be and there's more coming this year in August. I guarantee yeah. you that. Yeah, and all the chefs that I've met during our competition, I brought them to the Philippines and they love the Philippines. And everybody knows Otto Weeball, uh, Tony Ku, and um, Rudy, and of course, uh, a lot of them, like Jay Gamboa is there, and Fernando. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. Santo. Yeah, buddy, when we went to France, uh, oh, yeah. there's a team that we brought in Nantes, or not, they call it not, I call it Nantes in France. So it's a world uh, bread competition. So it's a bread Olympics. Yay. Yeah, and this is, Woo. I am so proud of this. Honestly, it is the only Philippine team to be in the World Pastry Cup to date. And we are vowed yeah. to go back. I, and I, 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 Oh, oh, ayan, makikita mo who, who's the who, di ba? I mean, Miko was still a young, a young pastry chef who was a, really tag along with us. Sabi ko, sama ka, learn from this. And this was 2014. And on 2006, when me and Buddy competed, we were crying when we lost. Bakit? Mukha, mukha kaming kawawa. Because we... Lahat doon, naka-trolley kami, naka-SM na plastic bag yung gamit namin. <laughs> lahat, lahat silang emote, lahat si and body. We, kasi may kortina yun eh. Pag sinara mo yung kortina, tapos na yung competition, nagyakapang kami ni body. And crying, talaga crying to ano, because we knew we could have done better with the support. We, we, we only have few support from few companies, not the government. So, parang yakap kami, and he said, Let's do this again. Sabi ko, our goal is 2014. Uh, and okay. prayers answered. We, we finished number 12 out of 2014. Wow. May kumukomment. May kumukomment. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Aaway ko yan. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Aaway kami yan. Love, love and hate kami. Super. <laughs> Funny thing about Jackie, when, when we compete, you know, uh, she, she knows I'm very strict with uh, a lot of things, especially our weight going, uh, <laughs> our weight going to, to any competition. So, I check the weight. Because although Philippine Airlines is our sponsor, ano yung weight namin? Uh, because of tank, you know, we have leeway. So, we went to Hong Kong, we went to weight. We okay? went to Hong Kong, Siyempre, nabawasan na eh, di ba? Yan si Jackie, magtatago sa akin yan the night before. Siyempre, mapasok ko ng mga kwarto nila. Oh, ano wait mo? Ano wait mo? Compute ko yan. Si Jackie, tawa lang ng tawa yan. <laughs> Tapos mayamaya, pagdating namin sa airport, putya, overweight kami. Sabi ko, bakit ganun? Eh, dapat underweight. Putya, during that time, siya shopping yan eh. Pas patago eh. Bumili ng mga halaman sa IKEA. Sa Hong Kong, sabi ko, halaman. Ba't ka bibili halaman sa Ikea? Eh, wala. Gusto ko lang. And doon, pagbukas ko ng ano, parang halaman. Tapos ngayon, every time we travel, ah, oh, yan yung ano niya, halaman, halaman, halaman. Eh, may Ikea na dito. Sabi ko, sabi ko, dyan ka na bumili ng halaman mo, ah. Huwag ka na bibili sa Ikea. <laughs> uh, it's just uh, one of our love and hate, ano. Oh, yeah. Good friends. 
And this is my family. Yeah. Oh. One of our travels. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy is now 14. Jamie, 14. she is a future, hopefully, K pop dancer. She's been applying to the academy. She speaks fluent Korean. Wow. And during this, wow. during this two years of pandemic, she's been studying and um, she got into one of the academy and then uh, again had to reapply again. Now she's trying to pursue that career. She's 17 now. And of course, my, my lovely wife, Mitzi, who's a uh, dentist of, of most of the uh, Japanese because she speaks Japanese and she studied uh, in Japan. So that's why my love for Japanese is uh, tremendous. Uh, Chef James, uh, kaya naman daw yes. mabigat, ano, may uwi siyang medal. <laughs> tama, tama yun. Hindi lang medal, pera. Ako, <laughs> nanalo sila ng pera. I mean, one of the highest award in 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 history of the Philippines, I think. Uh, that was the high tea competition, which she coached with uh, one of, some of the youngest uh, pastry chef. Yan. Sila Nico, sila Jay, yan. This was recent, uh, our trip last December, so we went to Kalua Ranch. So it's one of the ranch that we own. Her mom lives in Hawaii, Mitzi. So itong ranch na to, parate, daan lang kami ng daan dyan. All of a sudden, sabi mo, ano ba itong Kalua Ranch? Doon pala ginawa yung Jurassic Park, most of the movies, some of the movies. And finally, after maybe 15, 20 years of driving there, finally we, we decided to go. And it was fun, actually. It's a lot of bonding with my kids. Yeah. That's good. This is in Hawaii also. Yes, this is in Hawaii. In uh, uh I forgot not the place. One of the beaches in the back. In Hawaii. Yeah, and yeah, this is in Hawaii also. Down ko palang picture na sa Hawaii. Oh, in Hawaii. Ito. I love that. Um, um, I didn't know. Yes, that. but um, oh, pero sabi nga hulaan yung kusino. <laughs> Sabi ko, eh, siyempre alam nyo na kung sino, di ba? Yeah. I mean, this is one of the fun uh, pictorials we had. Because this is Buddy's idea. Saan yeah. talaga? Oh, okay. lublub natin yung mukha natin sa chocolate. Wala lang. So, uh, sige. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it, 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 it really one of the sweetest, one of the fondest uh, pictorial we ever had. Really, uh, a great time. Bonic yeah. talaga. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ano yan? Talagang ano, uh, para kaming si Raul yun yan. Tag ang tagal bago matanggal din. Tumigas na siya. <laughs> oh, yeah. And here, here is uh, the two person that I, you know, owe my competition. Honestly, oh, the story, solid, oh, solid yun na yan. Lolo na yan. And Paolo, honestly, this would have never happened without Joel's approval. Because when we went on the table in Milky Way, I remember, core group kami na eh. Ako, si Badi, Fernando, and Jay. When Joel had a meeting, sabi niya, can you make a competition? Sabi namin, there has to be a standard. Anong standard? Pare-pareho lahat na equipment, lahat. Running water, hindi timba, hindi balde, ganito, ganyan. Tapos, sabi namin, it has to be consistent. And not only that, we bring in international judges and you pay for the airfare and the lodging. Alam mo, ginawa ni Joel, tumayo siya. Sabi namin, if you want a credible competition, this is the way to go. Nag-isip siya, napatayo siya, umikod, mupo, sabi niya, okay, deal. So we, we invite our friends, our foreign judges. Why? Because these judges are not biased. Unlike the, I mean, from the history that I, I was hearing, you know, a lot of them, just because they work in a certain uh, in this, or hotels or restaurants, pinapaboran sila. Here, they don't have any you know, notion where you work, who you are. At the end of the day, you know what? It's just a matter of judging your skills. It's not competing with each other. It's about yourself, how you do well. And then, once you do well, then you're proud to say, I'm from Shangri-La, I'm from Rappos, I'm from Sisu, I'm from whatever restaurant. And that's how the competition we want to be. Fair and simple. So, yan. Si Joel, alam, alam ni Nancy yan. Joel is a very nice, kind, um, soft-hearted. He never says no to me. Minsan lang kami nag-away na yan, 10 years. <laughs> Dahil kasalanan niya. Alam niya yan, kasalanan niya. Meron akong ice competition. And may ice plant si, ano, si Joel. Kaya ko yan, kaya ko yan. 
dumating yung ice ko, may buta sa gitna. Sabi ko, paano mag-ice carving to? Diba? Galit na galit ako sa kanya. May buta sa gitna. Kasi yan yung ginagawa namin ice, eh. tube ice. Sabi ko, hindi. Kailangan ko bloke. Kailangan ko bloke. Dumating talaga may butas. Sabi ko, doon, talagang nagsigawan kami. Sabi, hey, hindi mo sinabi. Sabi ko, kailangan ko magkasabihin. May picture ka na. Yan. Pero, the funny thing, ha, yung mga tao sa paete, kasi they competed eh. They were they created something where the judges really wow, talagang wow. Yung may butas sa gitna, nagawa nila ng eagle, nagawa nila ng nagsiskateboard. Ang galing. Tinagpi-tagpi nila. Ang galing ng mga tika paete. Yeah. A lot of stories. This last Here, time. this is our moment. Yeah, this is our moment. We were on top of the big stage where we see uh, star chefs, every pastry chef, uh, Pierre Hermé, this and that. I mean, lahat talaga, not only that, all of the chefs were there. And this is the World Pastry Cup. That when you go there, I, I, I suggest to all the, the pastry chefs or the future chefs or the students, to once in their lifetime to witness this grand competition. It's a wow, talaga. Kami, tumutulak kami ng karta. Honestly, ah, you know, we would be rubbing elbows with all these chefs. Uh, uh, the chef of uh, si Archance, uh, sino pa ba? Sila Daniel Bulu. You know, I mean, you, you would see them there, you know, uh, Joel Robuchon. I mean, wow. it's one Ooh. thing that we, you know, we, we, talaga, eh, kami, wala, na kami. Kumbaga, we were just there, you know, to get the experience. We knew, we knew, it's, uh, it's a very, uh, a hard, difficult, you know, uh, to win that competition. And during that time, it was Japan who won that competition. And honestly, uh, the Asians did very well. Malaysia came in fourth, I think. Um, and and one of the things that you know we 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 uh, up to now we remember is really uh, that experience and how I wish everyone could feel what we felt during that time. Even na lamig lamig kami, ah. and it's snowing. Ah, uh, the next one, teka, nag, nag, ano eh? Ngayon konti na lang team. I'm not sure if it's this January, this coming January or the following. Kasi may qualifying eh. We qualify in Asia, and then four teams in Asia will be sent there. So one, we're one of the four, top four, which is Singapore, Malaysia, us, and... Kasi Japan have their own competition. Korea has their own competition. So uh, there's one, one more team that I'm getting. Uh, basta apat kami doon. Australia. There you go. Wow. Anyways, Galing yeah. na story. Galing na story, wow. uh, Chef. Um, my Thank question, uh, uh, what yes. did your parents say now after what happened 30 years ago and throughout your career? Uh, here, I can always say, um, uh, well, my mom, she's still alive. My dad passed away. But my mom always tell, tells me how proud she is, right? And not only that, um, sabi niya, you know, um, take care of Ikomai because that would be one of your legacy once you're done with this world. And I thank my parents for putting me in this position where I learned so much from my younger age, which I'm still using it now. You know what? As an owner, I, and my, my employees know this. I bust the table. I still do, you know, mop the floor, or sweep the floor. I, I did some dishwashing about two weeks ago because I absent in dishwasher. Ko, and they saw that. And I, I would never say I would be embarrassed of that because we are not just a family, but a community. Why a community? I want a bigger reach. Family, medyo malite. A community, I always say, I want a bigger reach for everyone. Be able to, to touch their lives. Um, and with Ikumai, honestly, it's an open avenue for me, not only to touch their life, but to share the gospel with them. Galing. So yon. Uh, right. Learning, baby steps. Yeah. Siguro ang last question ko, Chef, uh, since uh, this pastry, no, what does it take for us to win the World Pastry Cup? What does the young pastry chef need to do or accomplish or what What do we need to do? Um, commitment. Commitment and love what you do. Love what you do. Uh, 
commitment, work hard. Be good, do good, work hard. Honestly, everything will fall into places. Sabi ko nga eh, my employees come to work not to get paid. Of course you get paid. But that's not your number one commitment. Your commitment is, I go to work because I enjoy what I'm doing. Two, because I'm going to share something new. Three, I'm going to learn something new. And four, I'm doing something I'm getting paid at. Kasi dito sa Philippines, one thing I learned, eight hours, uwi na ako. Chef, uwi na ako. Teka, dami pang tao eh. Where's the commitment of you service, giving the service extra mile? Yeah, I'll pay you overtime. In the, in the States, siguro, tanga na lang kami. We were not getting paid overtime because we love what we're doing. They say, okay, go home. Go home. No, no. I, I need to finish this. So in order for the next person, next day, medyo magang na siya because he would do the same thing to me when I come in in the afternoon. Kasi pag iiwan mo yung basura, matatanggap mo yan next day basura dahil he didn't care about it. And that's what I want to share with all these up and coming culinary students. It's really to care about what you do, whatever it's culinary or something that you do in your own restaurant or you know, care for the people who is with you. Because at the end of the day, they will be the ones who will be helping you. Yes, you help yourself, but at the end, like I said, I couldn't be here right now or I wouldn't be here right now without my people, with my staff. And if they're listening right now, it's because of them. When they say, oh, you serve that dessert, Moshe. Oh, it's the best dessert I've tasted this whole, this whole year. Ganyan, during pandemic, sabi ko, tatawagin ko yung pastry siya ko, it's this person. Yes. It's not me. It's our idea. But at the end, execution is theirs. In competition nga, alam ni Jackie yan, ni Buddy, ni Peng. When we pick a student or a chef to compete, it's not what we want to do. It's what, kumbaga, it's what he or she can do. Because I can tell him, gawin mo to, ito yung mananalo. His, her skills or his skills is this much. Yun lang yung kaya niya. And we just try to improve on that. It's something that she knows what to do. It's not what I want to do. Same thing with the customer. What do customer wants? And we will try our best. It's not what I want. Maybe what I want is not what the customer wants. At the end of the day, what are we trying to do here? It's trying to cater to all these people. It's not myself. Eh, kung ganun lang, isang bahay na lang kakain. Kainin ko na lang yung niluto ko. Ito yung gusto ko eh. But, you know, even with the Japanese, they tell me, this is, and we've created something that, you know, like the gyoza sisig. This came about because we want to say thanks to the Philippines and binding them with the Japanese influence during June 12 of 2017 or 2018. One week lang yung menu na yun. Kasi ayoko yung fusion eh. Because we're not a fusion restaurant. It's actually a progressive menu. But when we did that, a lot of people after a week, the Japanese were saying, where is the gyoso sisig? Where is the gyoso this, that? So we have to bring it back and say, okay, today we, we are still doing the gyoso sisig. And it's probably one of the popular seasick that we have. Um, and the thing is, it's what they want. It's not what we want. Honestly, and even the Japanese, tatanggalin namin yan. But no, we have to continue on. And for a week of marketing that, diba? So it worked for us. Yeah. All right. Nancy? Malami. So I, I just want to acknowledge uh, Chef James because uh, you've gone full circle, I think, from where you started until where you are now. And uh, I remember the things you said. You said practice makes it better than yesterday because tomorrow is another day. And yes. then you said be good, do good, work hard. And I, I think you embodied embody those those words that you say more importantly you had good relationships and connections Indeed, yeah. it wasn't political it wasn't uh, uh, yung payamanan, payabangan. no uh -huh. you created yeah. a good foundation with with your fellow chefs with your students with your suppliers and yet you still have time for your family 
and for the love that your mom gives you. So uh, you yeah. you always acknowledge people. That's what's important. Eh. You give them you give them the you give them the stage. Diba? Wala kang ego, chef. Wala kang ego. Okay. Without then, them, without them, I'm no one. I mean, honestly, yeah. without these people. Yeah. And I then have you to. Want, I have to. You, and then you want to, you soil your hands, dishwashing, busing. <laughs> you, uh -huh. you know, ay, ay naman talaga, that's a good Filipino value that until now should still exist in restaurants. Agreed, Importantly, agreed, yeah. uh, you're not ashamed of... Um, what what are your the struggles you have plus uh talking about from where you started from the bottom going up you're a good learner you're a good teacher good student and most important of all you have a prayerful example you never forget god when you're making oh, no. decisions and i think no. you know that's the inner strength that you have that people will see okay so i'm very happy i'm so inspired by you thank you always thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Anton. Thank you. Anton, audio. I mean, maraming salamat, Chef. And, uh, Thank you. Guys, for those watching, please like and share this video yeah. and share with your family and friends. Uh, ganda, ganda. Very inspiring Thank story. Thank you. Sorry, ah. Masyado mahaba, pero... No, no, <laughs> ganda, 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 ganda. Ganda, ganda. Wala, wala, wala. Ano. Yeah. It was so inspiring. Now, it, we, it's not, ano, it's, it's there. Completo, oh, yeah. completo. It's a, it's a full circle eh, uh, about yeah. how yeah. Iko may start. From yeah. the start, eh, parang yeah. tuhog-tuhog pala lahat eh. No? Actually, Anton nga came to the restaurant, kala niya, Tochi, tapos, hindi niya, ka, hindi niya kala yung restaurant. When he first oh, walked in there, there, sabi niya, wow, restaurant pala to, chef. Sabi ko, yes, it is. And sabi ko, it took a while. 50 years, 49 years old when I got my first restaurant. Imagine, 49 oh, and wow. sabi ko, in God's time, diba? In God's time. Yeah. I mean, this 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 all fell in my lap. In fact, si Fernando yung una kong customer na co-construct pa. Nakaupo siya daw sa bar. Kailan ka magbubukas? Kailan ka magbubukas? Sabi ko, friends, ayoko, tatakot ako. Tapos ito na, si Jay nagpadala ng equipment. Honestly, these people were shelling me with equipment, with like oh support. Buddy will go in there, will, will tell me some pointers. I mean, all of these people, without them, I tell you, this won't be possible kasi sila yung talagang nagpupush sa akin magbukas. Because, okay na yung culinary school, your culinary days are over, you, you've you opened so many, you've touched so many students. Ito, gamitin mo na yung mga studyante mo because they need a place to work. And that's one of the things that I, you know, sabi ko, and it's also eh, time for sharing other things aside from just being culinary. Because, and you know what? J James and Anton, if it's really devoted to God and in His perfect time, it will happen without any hitch. Hindi mahirap. Oh, okay. Anton, 49 years old, sabi ko, utang na loob. Uh, um, uh, 40, 40, sorry, 47. Basta sa 40, ako na nagbukas ako. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm 53, turning 54. Sorry, ah, I'm telling my age. But it's not, it's not easy to open something like this on that, that age where tapos pandemic pa the stress that you get di ba it's 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 just holding on to that that kumbaga that promise that was given to you the, the promise that you know time i will tell you when is the right time and for me talaga the the, the floodgates open talaga during this time oh sabi ko nga I think, oh, you're right huh? salamat yeah, yeah. and uh, we end with this uh, comment Ever proud of you, brother? Ah, that's my sister who actually told me about Patina. Yeah, thank ah, you. Hi, Annette. Uh, hi. Yeah. And tell She's your like, mom. Tell your mom she raised all of your or her children well. Thank you. Dad. Yeah, we will. I will. Thank you. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Good night, Black uh, Nancy, and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you. Bye. -bye. That is. Uh, can you? Do a short video. Short video.